The computer is still a little choppy, but I'm actually really optimistic on how this is gonna go. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I have cleared out over 100 gigabytes of data. So, although there is chop, it is still okay. Welcome back, everybody. The ship is sailing forward. We have the repairs on. We're sailing off of the port forward. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, Artist Journal, March 11th, 2024, broadcasting from the inner half of the mind. Maybe the inner half of the nervous system where the mind resides. You know, kind of brings up an ancient topic. Where is the mind? Is it in the brain? Is it actually the inside the entire nervous system? It's an interesting question, isn't it? But let's go. There is another massive show here. I struggle. I struggle with all my heart to make this show shorter because, again, in my mind, and again, there's always different views on this whole topic, but on in my uh, in my world, I think it could be just, uh, it'll probably be just a tighter show, everything, uh, but it's incredibly difficult to know what to cut. And it's kind of like part of what I do here is cutting, you know, unfortunately. Forgive the hair. The hair is out of control this morning. There's no reason for that other than the fact that it is. So here is a brilliant artist. Here is a brilliant artist, Kayla Mattis, a new discovery here. And this is hilarious. A weaver out of L.A. is how the Instagram bio goes. I'll show it to you in a second. But first, let's just look up close at this brilliant artist here. And you're, there's so many things to love about this work. I, it's almost hard to know where to begin. And again, I'm very optimistic on this computer here. Uh, but it's hard to know where to begin. But I would say the humor is probably the first thing. Actually, you know, before the humor, it's the aesthetics. First of all, it makes it look, she makes it look easy. What's going on here? Just this kind of casual, you know, uh, juxtaposing different, you know, internet culture elements together. Uh, making it look easy, and I am always a huge fan of this kind of numbers like this, and then you see rewind 10 seconds as if straight out of, you know, maybe YouTube or some sort of video. Uh, the imagery of the internet, you know, the iconography, the memes, I mean, and woven, I, I was going to say knitted, but probably woven, and then this hilarious, you know, uh, message in the middle, fun fact, the internet was once a fun place for watching cat videos instead of monitoring the real-time collapse of late-stage capitalism. Critical error. And there is the cat playing the piano. Uh, so this is all, uh, when I saw this, it kind of hit all the notes. And I was having a discussion about this with my friend Arnaud. And it's kind of funny, like, because... Arno lives in Berlin too, so we're able to kind of talk about what we see, uh, and it, I, and also what has happened, let's say, in the Berlin scene. And it's kind of funny work like this, you know. Just to kind of take a step back further, there's an article I saw Alliance Survey reference about uh, how art, you know. Are we allowed to be having fun while watching art? You know, like this sort of thing, or while consuming art? And th what we see here, to me, flies in the face. It, it, it runs in the opposite direction. It's uh, of kind of what's happened, I would argue, to overgeneralize in the contemporary art scene of the last 20 years, this kind of very serious, you know austere, you know, we're, you know, it has to be, we're talking about, you know, incredibly important issues here, so it has to have no sense of humor. And that somehow a sense of humor is somehow, or something being fun, somehow undermines it as poetry. And I submit to you, this completely uh, goes in the opposite direction and proves at least for me, that that is not the case. This has everything. It speaks to us. It's using our vocabulary. It is a to you know using Baudelaire's kind of you know art of the present and Ballard as well. You know the the painter of modern life. I think was the essay where the concerns of the artist should be the present and kind of you know the contextualizing and describing the world they live in. 
for us, almost restating the world, reformulating the world, recontextualizing it for us. You know, and what do we see here? I mean, again, there's so much going on here. And what I also like, you know, you could talk about the mediums, right? If the weaving kind of solves the whole issue of, okay, imagine this was just done as, you know, cutouts in Photoshop and then put together. It wouldn't have the same effect, would it? Might be kind of cool, and maybe that's how she started. Who knows? But the fact that it's done with weaving, this traditional tool for making clothing, right? Uh, the fact that it's done with weaving, again, it's that alchemical transformation of traveling through the mediums. It solves for, okay, rather than just doing the simple copy, it, that is solved, uh, through using weaving as the transformative, as you you know, uh, medium, or as you know, as you could do with screen printing and whatnot, weaving of course has its own history, right? And so that also works into this, you know, this female artist, right? And w weaving being traditionally associated with making clothes or repairing clothes, you know. So uh, what I love about this work. Uh, is there's so much to love. Uh, the, again, the, the solution of how to present this kind of information in an aesthetically pleasing way, there is the color, there is the content, there is the humor, right? Here we're, like here it's a kind of a commentary, and I'd argue a biting commentary, or at least a pressing commentary. Is it biting? I don't know, if, you know, but a, a pressing commentary, we're forced to look at our own culture in this work, among many of our other works, which are basically just as strong, one could argue. Uh, you know, so I'm just picking one. This just kind of, uh, you know, was there with the cat and the piano. Uh, so I went with it. Uh, just an awesome artist. And so... Getting us started here <clears throat> on our Monday here. Welcome, welcome to a new week here. And here is the artist, Kayla Mattis, again, weaving in LA. And have has actually just begun a major solo exhibition at the Broad. Uh, I think the main contemporary art museum there in LA. Solo exhibition, Doom Scrolling. Again, the humor. And bringing it back to my conversation with my friend Arnaud, what I loved about the conversation is what I was telling Arno is I'm seeing like a waterfall of art, even if we just go within the, forget digital art for a second, and we just go within the traditional parameters of physical contemporary art. I'm seeing so much digital art, sorry, uh, physical art, contemporary art that's coming out from basically the new, the next generation that is funny, that is colorful, aesthetically interesting, you know, that... I think it's going to steamroll this over serious, you know, art scene. This that that is taking itself, one could argue, too seriously. This pedantic art scene, you know, pedantic being like uh, teaching, overly lecturing, right? Here, we're laughing, we're laughing, and there's Amazon, and it's like, uh, and this, I mean, this is probably my favorite. You know, and low battery, and it's hilarious. And the whole thing, it's like a commentary on the culture itself. Low battery, right? Uh, you know, and there's our memes that we all love. And and just on a technical level, there seems to be kind of like dithering almost in like this, uh, you know, this emoji with its mind being blown. Handwoven cotton, wool, mohair, and acrylic, interestingly. 25 by 18 and a half inches. So here... What a discovery for me. Uh, just awesome, awesome artist here uh, with a big show at the Broad. And there is the artist at work. Uh, so again, it's pretty unusual to start with a physical artist here, but uh, this time it was actually kind of an immediate like, wow, why have I never seen this artist before? The CAPTCHA. I'm not a human. Again, like so just a rich, you know, a rich visual poetry here. Uh, an artist that just hits the whole thing. Uh, so uh, let's continue here. I have a bit more of the website. Right, so here's just a bit more. 
I mean, these are from 2023, hanging by a thread. Uh, and so again, we see the memes here being celebrated. There's the weather. Again, this is, in a one way of putting it, the story of our lives here. We're sad to see you go. I'm not a robot. And meeting now, I am not a cat. You know, and then even this stuff, you know, just the, the weird memes, you know, could hang in the same, you know, uh, show as a Lorna Mills with the humor, right, and the memes. Uh, so just awesome. Just awesome. Uh, so no wonder she has a show at the Broad. Quite an honor uh, for an artist born 1989. So uh, just very impressive stuff here. Uh, as you can see, uh, just totally awesome. So that is Kayla Mattis' website there. Looks like mostly the work is from 2018 on. And again, I think, did I bring up the about? Uh, let me just quickly bring up the about, and then we'll run through this episode. Born 1989, lives and works in LA, and basically Rhode Island School of Design. So all to say, uh, just pretty awesome uh, artist here. Uh, so glad to, can't believe I hadn't known about them. So awesome to discover. And here's the show, the the Broad Art Museum, uh, again, the Contemporary Art Museum in LA. So this is February 3rd to August 18th, 2024. And the show awesomely is called Doom Scrolling. Get free tickets. Wow. Uh, so there you go. And here are some of the works again from the show. So a very fun beginning here. Uh, and yeah, so I think we already saw some of these. So let's continue here. Uh, coming up, Neutro, uh, Neutro Arts Collective is going to be on the uh, spaces here. So thrilled about that. Should be very interesting. We might get a few artists on the show. Uh, should be great. So looking forward to that. So do check that out. I will pin that actually on my profile. And so they've been doing a ton of work on Zora. And just, I think they're associated with the Bosque uh, resident, Bosque Grazia's residency program. So we're just going to learn a whole bunch about what Neutro Arts is up to, because clearly they're up to something. And also a big thank you to the collectors here for picking up this uh, Mark McGuire early, you know, baseball card, 1984 uh, United States uh, baseball team. So here again, just playing around in the sketchbook here and enjoying myself and everything. So thanks everybody who collected. It was an edition of 10 for five Tezos and just having too much fun, really. So again, uh, thank you for that. And thank you for the offer there, our milk. So uh, having fun over here. Uh, as here is the show. So uh, last show, let's just quickly check on the comments here. Tom Battle, thank you, Adrian. Iconolator. You're welcome. Uh, Iconolator hooked on this channel. Good luck with the laptop issues. I think they're actually uh, much better despite the choppiness here. I, I think we're in much better shape. There are literally, I don't think I would have been able to get this many tabs open uh, last time around. So that's why I'm kind of optimistic. And Rata Yonke, awesome to hear from you as ever. And also on the Twitter... Uh, we got some comments here. Thank you, Danita Alchemist. The computer gods favored your recording. A wonderful an analysis and really great to hear people enjoyed that show. It was a nightmare to record there. Uh, so uh, I totally appreciate it. Yeah, definitely had technical issues uh, like crazy there. Bijou too. Awesome and inspiring. Totally great. I was just trying to get it done. So it's really nice to hear. JNK, awesome to hear from you. Trippy Collector. Uh, laughing, uh, laughing my head off. We have a hard deadline in an hour 15. Checks time episode one hour and 30. I had to start recording after my meeting. Uh, so I actually had to break it up a couple of times. Always the best. Glad you got to do a web, web, web redemption after yesterday's debacle. Feel like it's better or worse or just different. I actually thought the show that was lost was uh, one of my best, but who? so it goes, so it goes. But we're always, you know, as I always say, artists are always the worst judge of their own work, and that includes making videos like this. Anyway, I appreciate the comments and glad you enjoyed it. Very Massa. I think we have, oh no, it's low trippy. We have a work from uh, today. Very Massa. Thank you for the comments. Ilay. Thank you, Ilay. Ilay was, uh, it, it is really hard to organize a computer. We have to manifest a new artist journal computer. Are you MacBook or PC, laptop or desktop? Ilay put a lot of effort there. 
<laughs> as the computer uh, uh, freezes. I lay put a huge amount of effort into actually talking about fundraising. I'm okay, uh, is sort of my take on it. Because if you know what the issue is, I thought of a few things. Because first of all, I'm not poor. So if I need to get a new computer, I can get a new computer. Uh, I can always fundraise also on my own as far as if I put out open edition, say, hey, this is to, you know, so I can always do that. And the issue is, is if all of a sudden people, let's say, uh, just donate, whether it's, you know, Tezos Foundation or some other, you know, or artists, if all of a sudden I get donated, all of a sudden I have to show up here no matter what. And I enjoy this, and I probably will, but I think part of the enjoyment is the no-pressure situation. So if I go to Sicily, which I will in a few weeks here, uh, and I want to just do two shows or one show or take a couple of weeks off, I can do that. And so if I all of a sudden am getting free computers from people, I kind of feel like I owe them something. And maybe, you know, so all to say, I really appreciate the effort here. And uh, it's nice to know there are great people out there in hard times. Uh, should I should I fall on hard times, which frankly can happen to anybody. Uh, so I really appreciate that I lay in the effort. Uh, but I think I'm doing okay. I, again, I'm pretty optimistic on this recording. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to delete even more. I haven't defragged the drive yet, and it seems to be going fairly well. I think once I defrag it, uh, we're really going to be in business. So again, thank you for the support there, Ile, and the effort. Ilya Zura, now I have to. Sh- now I have a show to watch. Thank you. You're welcome. Ain't nothing. Let's go. Another episode. Awesome. Cedar Plank, also known as Waffles. Thank you, Poco. Stoked you posted this a little earlier today so I could watch with coffee. Yeah, because it was all the tabs were already ready. Tez Foundation stuff is wild, and Sabato, Sabato and Estelle hit the nail on the head. They're sitting on an art gold mine, but don't realize it. Pressure from Zora and other L2s building. And this is another thing I was thinking. In terms of the finances of this show, I, like, I should probably be, I think I'm going to reach out to, uh, I think it was Optimism that did the airdrop, right? Because there should be sponsorships here where it's like, you know, 20 seconds, let's say, or 30 seconds on. I don't even know what the marketplace is on Optimism. And if there is one, I think people would want to know. I kind of want to know. So if they're looking to get their message out and I'm looking, you know, for sponsors. So that's kind of how I'm thinking right now. There's a lot of opportunity. Bitcoin just blew through the record there. I think it's at 71K. Uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunity out there from, so all to say, uh, yeah, there's a lot of competition out there, especially in this bull. So again, thank you for the comment waffles and the ordinal site looks super cool. Could you imagine a waffles on ordinals? That would blow my mind. That would be just so exciting. And I lay, thank you for the pronouncement of, I'm already forgetting how to do it. Peony. I think of that flower skull takes. It's wild how much I look forward to the show, grabbing some coffee and headphones. And this is why I keep showing up is the enthusiasm of the people who watch this show. Uh, so thank you, skull takes. Ilya Babarin, good work. It's almost like I'm waking up today while talking to you. Human boy, wonderful episode. I hope you can repair your ship soon. Although that is a, what is a pirate ship without a few leaky holes t- to bail out and fix now and then? Indeed. And the glitches maybe make sense with what you are doing here. Exactly. Exactly. B, the feedback loop and catalyst effect are real. Constantly feel validated and encouraged when seeing your show. This is super interesting. Basically, this kind of, we're basically having a kind of latent curatorial conversation here by people continuing to watch and me continuing to kind of put stuff in and add stuff in. There is kind of a interesting discussion being had here without necessarily putting that discussion of on the surface of what are we including and what are we not including? It's just, uh, you know, and again, I try and be as inclusive and open and experimental. And sometimes it's just, there's not enough space to put everything. So then I try and cycle it in, in other shows and whatnot. So I really try, uh, again, I know what it's like as those, uh, Kalo quote was put out there from the podcast that Kalo did, uh, I know what it's like to be, you know, just nobody knows what you're doing or takes you seriously as an artist for 10 years. So I'm pretty sensitive uh, to people out there where that might be happening. Anyways, let's continue here. Denise, thank you for thank you for always bringing us such a good vibe and for showing us so many talented artists. Well, thank you, Denise, and I really appreciate the comments and great to hear from you. 
and D, who actually, so Deboris, who actually worked with Sky Goodman, uh, collaborated on the work here. Uh, so excited to see Sky Goodman piece on your show. I feel it's the final form of this work, which turned into the way into my way of exploring the play between analog and digital pr practices. Sky took it full circle with this piece. And yeah, this was a very uh, cool work. And again, it just felt like kind of a summary piece to a certain degree of what we're up to here with this kind of classical reference being kind of digitally, kind of completely distorted and remade. Also, the Rizograph GIF, Rizograph GIF is actually from four separate scans of Rizograph prints. Those prints were sent to folks that bought my Tez piece, but I kept the scans and made one of my first GIFs with them. Thanks for sharing my work. So my absolute pleasure and super interesting. And finally, Mork. That feeling when I hear Pokebelly say this only went for 15 days, so it's on a 25 edition piece, and I see my prices and realize my art isn't that great, and I want to kill myself. Well, okay, well, don't feel that way. Uh, again, uh, and the thing, the beauty of, don't, yeah, uh, the beauty of Web 3 is how fast it moves. And how, let's say, you know, you're not thrilled with previous work. It's happened to all of us. Uh, you can, basically, the memory is short out here. If you put out a masterpiece and then you put out two duds, uh, they'll remember the duds for the most part. And then if you put out duds and then put out a masterpiece, the duds are forgotten. So every day is kind of a new day is Heraclitus, the great, what well, probably my favorite saying, the sun is new each day in Web3 here. To quote Heraclitus, the sun is new each day. The great pre-Socratic philosopher, is it out of Samos? Anyways, uh, let's continue here. Ilay, so again, I just want to make sure uh, to thank Ilay for the effort. So far, so good, and I have a good feeling about this recording here. I did some, pre I got a massive four terabyte uh, USB drive too, where I'm copying things over. Uh, let's see. I mean, it is still freezing here. It is still freezing, but let's see. Uh, and also, and yes, we already talked about this as well. Uh, I thought this was kind of interesting. I'm not a huge Banksy person. I thought the movie Last Exit Through the Gift Shop, which I think kind of launched Banksy to fame to a certain degree, at least to a whole new level of fame, because that became a really cool movie to see, let's say, in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so famously anonymous, as we've been having this discussion about anonymity, and there could be a legal row could finally force mystery artist Banksy to reveal his real name. So this is interesting here, uh, and again, this is the only person I've heard of. The Massive Attacks Robert Del Naha is thought to be Banksy, but who knows? So there's a, you know, a bit of a legal dispute over the authenticity of works, and so maybe Banksy's name is forced into the spotlight, interestingly. Uh, th so this happened, I think, just the other day. It is quite the defacement here. Usually this is, you know, done with... Uh, with the glass on top and then you throw the soup or whatever. This was, uh, you know, real iconoclasm, I guess we would say. The iconoclasm being, you know, the destruction of images. Let's just actually define uh, our chat GPT, uh, chat open AI. Let's get us a good definition of iconoclasm. You know, I subscribe here to chat GPT and they start me with, uh, okay, so with 3.5 there, what is iconoclasm in the context of the arts? Refers to the deliberate destruction within a culture of the culture's own religious icons, right? So sometimes there is a religious context and other symbols or monuments, usually for religious or political motives. Okay, so that is definitely iconoclasm that we're seeing here. It is a ph phenomenon that has occurred in various cultures throughout history, most notably during periods of religious reform or political change. Now, I believe this is related to the conflict in uh, Gaza, right? Because this, I don't know the exact history, but this person uh, somehow inspired, you know, the state of Israel or something to this effect. So this person not liking what they're seeing in the Middle East is now, you know, Iconoclasm. So interesting. I, I just think it's interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, just notable. And so I show it here. Quite provocative. I mean, again, that's destruction. Uh, 
So that's a whole other level. But again, this has been happening uh, throughout the history of art. And I think of, you know, uh, Hatshepsut, the Egyptian uh, pharaoh, the woman who was king, as I think she's sometimes described, once she was done, as well as Akhenaten, I believe, they just uh, scraped, they got rid of all of the evidence of their name, their cartouche, you know, which is the pharaoh's name in the circle in the Egyptian hieroglyphs. They scraped all of them away and really tried. So it's something that goes back. We're talking ancient Egypt here, really, to the some of the basic foundations of uh, the world art. So, again, we, it hasn't gone away, just interestingly. Uh, Lorna Mills commenting, this is how we build. So I just thought this was interesting, this whole... Uh, and so an X copy sold to Cosimo de' Medici for $592,000. And I thought of the Taschen book. Uh, so it's kind of interesting because, and I think it was called Airdrop, if I'm not mistaken, when Airdrop, right? So it's just kind of interesting, uh, you know, just interesting that we happen, you know, because again, I put it this way, it's almost like Cosimo was in the Taschen book. X copy was probably heavily featured, I suspect. And so this kind of, again, is that kind of very, uh, I don't want to call it narrow, but very specific culture uh, that we find on Web3 of art and Web3. And that's not to say it's good or bad, but there is a very specific, what I call loosely, kind of mainstream Web3 art thinking, right? So a notable sale. You know, again, and another more evidence of the bull market here. Uh, DC Investor, another kind of big crypto account here. Any talented digital artist who is actively involved in NFTs during the last bear market and is still here through the next bear market has a shot at becoming legendary for generations. Those who grind it out through the hardest of times naturally command outsized influence. You know, the way I would put it, because I've seen other posts too where people say it has no impact whether you built in the bear or not. I think it does in the sense that you have a lot less competition in a bear market because there's not as many people who are there trying to cash in, which, and I actually thought the market was quite good, as I've commented on many times in the bear market. I was found it surprisingly strong, uh, particularly on Tezos. People were bored. They were buying art because they didn't know what else to do with their crypto, you know? Uh, so... Uh, I actually I think the bear market. The reason why it's good to be around in the bear market is because there's not as much competition, and you get to know people. And more time in, uh, you know, the more you can kind of grow your collector community. Uh, so and just get your name out there without competing. You know, Bitcoin goes to one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. How many people are you going to be competing with to get your ordinal collection or whatever it is seen? Right. So let's continue here. Nick, speaking of ordinals, Nick, who is co-founder of Gamma.io, uh, which is a Bitcoin uh, launch pad and what is it? Uh, art marketplace. Looking forward to our next platform release on Gamma.io. I'm biased, but I feel our collection mint offering is already the best, smoothest in the game. This will level up in a big way and add a ton of new fun mechanics. So again, What's cool about uh, Gamma.io is it allows lazy minting so that the collector pays the fees because it's probably getting pretty darn expensive uh, to mint on Bitcoin right now, especially if Bitcoin doubles in price from here, right? Uh, more ex exciting next couple of weeks here for art on Bitcoin. So again, Nick from Gamma.io uh, kind of tantalizing tweets there. Here's Sabato on the one ETH equals one ETH debate. Last night, I adjusted the reserves on a few one of ones that I have listed on foundation. Does one ETH equal one ETH? Well, not realistically, because ETH isn't an actual currency. But on the flip side, anyone telling artists to peg their work to USD is a fad. We're here for the idea of the post-national money. And I thought that was a really interesting idea. The post-national money. Maybe that's what this is in the end, all these cryptos. These are post-national monies. Because, of course, money, currencies as we understand them, they're almost, if not entirely, when they're not crypto, associated with a nation. So isn't that interesting, Sabato? Uh, interesting comment. And there's Sabato's beautiful work there, Glitch Hero. So the prices come down on Glitch Hero. 
Beautiful work. Emperor's Trash, ETH upgrade coming. So there's an ETH upgrade to get into the weeds a little bit of blockchain. There is supposed to be a big ETH upgrade coming in a couple of days here. Maybe sooner. What is it? The 11th? So maybe tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so this is Empress Trash, ETH upgrade coming, meaning we're getting pro dank sharding, which is promised ETH gas fees should go down. I'll believe it when I see it. This has been promised so many times, and it usually happens for about two weeks, and then we're back to where we were. And that means ETH art sale is going to go bull again, finally in two, two days, two hours, right? Right? So interesting question. Now, super rare. I'll show it in a second. It looks like they're getting a bit of a makeover there on the website. Interestingly, I'll show that in a second. Here's Zora. Uh, Ed Marola on Zora and using, I think, the AI uh, feature that is new, Purple Pixel Deep Space, and looks like this is what's coming out. So Ed Marola totally impressed with the uh, AI tool on Zora. And Zach from Zora, who was on last week's show, there's an emergent meta on Zora right now, which is electronic musicians uploading live sets. Very interesting. So, of course, you can upload all kinds of media on Zora. I wonder what that does just from, and maybe it's not even worth mentioning. Maybe it is, uh, just the copyright perspective. There was a time when SoundCloud, you know, had DJ mixes, but they just purged the entire platform of DJ mixes because they must have gotten a call or a letter in the mail. Uh, Element Lee, more super interesting uh, physical art renditions of pixel art. Cardboard, acrylic, and laser. So adding to the uh, interesting... So before, adding to the situation here, because before we had this laser engraving or burning onto cardboard, now uh, Element Lee has added painting as an in-between step, just a background layer, which is quite interesting. So just continuing to evolve here, and look at this cool, again, kind of experimental pixel art here. And just to, and again, just put, uh, you know, engraved, so to speak, or burnt, I believe, into cardboard. Look at how precise it can be here, too. Uh, very impressive from Element Lee. Here's a bit more using canvas, and so burning into canvas. I wonder if Element Lee, I've wondered this before, if they have their own, uh, if they have their own, uh, laser engraver at home because they sure are doing a ton of experimentation. So maybe you can get ones for the home there. Uh, pretty cool. Very cool. Here's Skull Takes, Sunday Printing. So looking like a, not sure if that's Rezo print or maybe that's, you know what that looks like with the roller here. That looks like Lino Cut. This looks like Lino Cut printing here. There's the ink and there is the roller. And sometimes those rollers can be pretty expensive because they come of different quality. And all to say, it's looking really cool, isn't it? So Skull Takes doing some Sunday printing. What's kind of cool about uh, uh, lino cut and printing, it's messy, but you can kind of do it at home if you're kind of, if you really kind of are careful about it and you put a lot of uh, protection and like plastic around and maybe you can do it at home. Like it's a pretty small process. And here... Uh, Yoao Salazar, who I do follow, that is a glitch on X, Daily Mess. So just in the studio here with Yoao and this laptop, that hilarious laptop there uh, looks great. And so different, uh, just different things going on there in the studio. And also Uchana Guerra just finished my oil painting. So uh, cool oil painting there. So working in multiple mediums here from Luciana Guerra as well. And also Zach, who was on last week, uh, Zach Krevit, is putting out a big photography project, and I think this is on uh, Zora. Uh, I'll initially drop this stealth, so lurk my Zora profile if you want to be the first to join the experiment. Mo more info soon. And the thing about this uh, is, yeah, I will be one of three owners, meaning the other two holders are you and them. Uh, it's a journey we're going on together. Each image will begin blurred and will only reveal when all three holder slots have been filled. Holders will join a Telegram chat where we can discuss the work and share moments of our scattered global lives together. So interesting uh, project there from Zach on Zora. Also, Dr. Version in Miami. I was in Miami last week and I had a chance to view the exceptional sea change installation at the Perez Art Museum in Miami. It includes work by Lorna Mills, 
uh, Riddell Warner and Nicholas Sassoon, to name a few. You can view the work if you sign up to an account on the Perez Art Museum site. It has three channel installations, so the work here is somewhat abbreviated. So there it is. And there's Lorna Mills, uh, huge, on taking up the entire wall here. Uh, so very cool work. Love the, the composition on that one. Uh, very cool. The entire room is an interesting composition. So uh, here's more. And this is Leo Castaneda. So very cool there. Here's Donia. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, you could say I'm a woman in tech, like literally inside of this. So showing quite interestingly, there's like a soldering iron or something here that is literally showing the glitch and how it changes. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? So that is pretty cool. So Donia in the workshop there. Uh, Pretty uh, impressive. And let me just stop that video. Uh, here's another one. Quite nice colors with this one. So uh, all to say, there it is. Uh, the glitch camera is at work. And looking like trying different models out too, interestingly, which I imagine have different effects. And here's another one. Almost looking like it's going backwards here. This is Ellie Pritz with a Donia uh, camera here. So her camera has arrived. So... Uh, all very cool here. And here's Ocote, who again does that Global South series in AI. Uh, if you buy my art, I wrap it in my art. And so there is the art, and there is the wrapping paper. So a nice touch there. So just more examples of this work in the physical world. And I was mentioning here the... Uh, so I went... To, like some pages I could find a super rare... I uh, basically redo. Uh, and here, a really cool artist, hasn't minted forever since 2022, unfortunately. Uh, Mape and Y, just as an example, kind of a bit of a, a redesign here on the Super Rare site. So they are up to things at Super Rare, but I went to the homepage and it still had the white background there. So, but it looks like they, you know, something to watch is what's going on on Super Rare there. It looks like they are uh, putting another push in making another push uh, to kind of revitalize and do a little bit of rebranding. Remember we saw the multi-chain post, which I almost thought was a fake account at first. Uh, they're thinking it looks like they're going to go multi-chain, interestingly. Uh, let's continue here, or at least they're talking about artists that are, have gone multi-chain. Here is Rennie Fish, Nico Hills. So this is was just minted here. This is part of a super, uh, super chief gallery drop, I believe. There is some volume. Computer continues to play nice. Really cool music and art here. It's beautiful. So very, very cool work here from Rennie Fish. Uh, and that, and that, if I can minimize it, is uh, available for 0.73 ETH. And that is a collab with Ken Ikeda. So a very nice piece there. Kind of looks like a dog if I had to guess, but I'm not an expert in these things. And there's the cats at the bottom there. Uh, beautifully animated there too. And look at this beautiful piece by Yuri J, The Kitchen. This was minted on Super Rare uh, just on March 8th here. So a new work from Yuri J. And I thought this was quite a striking piece. Uh, kind of wonderfully simple. Uh, you know, it's just a kitchen. You got to love how all the doors are kind of open, including the microwave. Uh, kind of a messy kitchen, right? Of uh, really powerful work. We were talking about, you know, modernist artwork, and it's got just a beautiful composition to it. There's something just really, uh, there's something, again, almost like an impressionist painting or who knows what. A pretty nice piece uh, from Yuri J. Uh, so we'll see if that gets listed at anything. And a new one from Dan Control. I don't think we saw this one. Another one went for 250 Tezos here. Again, recombining old elements from previous works, including the background here. Like, I wonder how long, like, basically, this could have been done in a few minutes, really, just taking different layers and elements. Uh, it's a beautiful composition, and it's legit. It's a new composition. It's a new work, and it's actually quite beautiful and striking, uh, and interesting, you know, so just super interesting work as usual from the great remixer here, Dan Control.
Uh, going for 250 Tezos, which is $363 now. So nice move there. Here's Cider with an interesting piece, Intrusions in My Backyard, and again, Distortion, di Digital Illustration, and Collage, and what looked like a bunch of frogs, if I am not mistaken here. It kind of looks like frogs in a, kind of a forest here, or a backyard, uh, and there you can see the eyes and everything. It's kind of a fun work uh, from Cider, and this went for 0.69 ETH, so nice sale. That's a couple of thousand dollars, at least. Uh, very. That's like $2,300. Nice work, Cider. Uh, that is, and here's another one by Cider. Yeah, I think ETH just passed $4,000. It's quite the rise that we're seeing in crypto here. Again, where would you rather be, you know, right now as an artist? Cider, uh, another beautiful work here with this kind of strong green back, background. Beautiful distortions here, and even these nice little black squares in there. Uh, on what looks like a dog. Uh, so cool work there, posted on X. Here's Recollapse. Rhythm of the match kind of reminds me of that Henri, Rous Henri Rousseau, the football players. Uh, this is an addition of 10 for four Tezos. Half are gone. Let's take a closer look here. And again, I believe these are digital artworks, uh, but with kind of a physical feeling to them. There may be a combination, because you can tell it's quite digital there, uh, so, and even the brush strokes here look like they're made quite physically, or sorry, digitally, I should say. Uh, cool, again, I'm really partial to sports. I don't know what it is about sports paintings, uh, but it, they, I found them weirdly powerful. I don't know why. I really don't, maybe it's all of these figures, you know, maybe it's all the human bodies kind of here colliding and we're in action. It's kind of like a really fun way of portraying the body. It's doing sports, it's doing something interesting. Uh, really nice piece here, only four Tezos. I'll bring up uh, Henri Rousseau's football players. Some of you have already seen this before on this show, but I haven't shown it for a while. Uh, yeah, I mean, this work here by Henri Rousseau. Kind of a similar work in, thematically, right? Uh, just a, and I adore this work. Uh, there's just something about it. The color, uh, Rousseau just it was a master of color and composition, right? So interesting, interesting, interesting. Rhythm of the match, cool title. I think Uck seen, I think Uck is dropping some hints here of a work that's coming. I think that's what's going on here. We seem to see some VR or Apple Vision Pro. Kind of a Jason mask here and interesting kind of newer colors a little bit with the kind of peach orange with the blue and look at this great stairway kind of feels like Uxine's working on something uh this looks like a fragment doesn't it so that could be exciting a uh, little preview there Alejandro Cartag Cartagena and I think this is by don't buy actually is who this is is a, who I do follow by the way so this is don't buy and Pretty interesting piece here. And you can hear the folder. This is what I did this weekend. Maybe I should have started with this. Uh, this is what I did this weekend. And here you see a beautiful vase and some operating system windows and everything. So interesting piece uh, by Don't Buy. And this was hilarious. Uh, the failed artist number 77. Giving up on the Roman numerals, I don't blame you at this point. Self-portrait taped to a lamppost. And here is the failed artist and Burger King gang looks like they were responsible for this with the failed artist here, you know, not doing too well, taped to a lamppost. And there is the McDonald's or Burger King. It kind of looks like a McDonald's though in the background. A beautiful piece. You got to love the dark sky too and even the shadow here. I mean, it's nice details here. And of course, uh, the red wine, the hot dog, and the cigarette, and everything, maybe the cigar, uh, totally awesome. So uh, I woke up taped to a lamppost. Unfortunately, I have no recollection of being put there, so I have no tale to tell. Only two Tezos. Uh, beautiful work. And hilarious. Humor. Uh, Elizabeth La Mequera. Uh, so this is by PP Universal. Interesting piece. I like the composition here. There's something kind of almost, almost wanted to say expressionistic about it. And look at all this dithering inside. All of this kind of pixelated 
or I guess we should just call that dithering, interesting piece and then contrasting with these kind of big, bold brush strokes and look at the teeth. Again, looking like sampled uh, brushes here. Uh, really just kind of an interesting uh, work here. Interesting background there too. That is seven Tezos and addition of five. There are four left. And here is the taste, satisfaction. Interesting painting here with, again, no pupils that you can see or one large pupil and inside many jackets here. An interesting contrast here with the, is that Burberry, the scarf here, and then the Che Guevara. Interesting contrast uh, here. Uh, very interesting uh, piece. And then the, interestingly, the camouflage uh, uh, pants there and nicely painted, I might add. This looks like a digital painting, beautiful kind of gray sky, blue gray sky. That is to taste, that is addition of one, and that sold for 10 Tezos to Mikey Wilson. Nice pickup. Here is Bazaya. Buy me, GM, road to almost every day's 45 minute work, multi platform, and multi mechanics. 420 seems like an affordable date to start on. And so, just a cool combination of what seems like a leopard, a cheetah, maybe a lion, not sure. Uh, cool work here. And then again, Yves Saint Laurent, or is that, that's not Yves Saint Laurent, that is Louis Vuitton. Yeah, so more kind of designers here, interesting shadow and everything. Uh, Nub 1914 with a nice work here, still available. One of one for nine Tezos, and we've got a couple of dolphins, delphins, delfines, which sounds like Spanish for dolphins, if I had to guess. And again, just a nice piece by Nub 1914 with what looks like almost like a landscape at the bottom there and flowers. Another wild work, dolphins and flowers. Uh, again, addition of one for nine Tezos. So the additions of one are back. Uh, Amiga's one, this is by Nov1914, addition of 10. Another super interesting composition here. Uh, not too much to say on it other than just super interesting. Flower at the bottom, some Amiga's at the top here. You see the, interestingly, the eye is kind of overlapping with the blue there, as well as over here. Uh, just interesting work as usual. Addition of 10 for five Tezos. Here is Mumble Boy, Live Friction. As we start cruising here, uh, and here just another example of what looks like physical and digital mark making or cutting. Uh, all combined into one, maybe scanning, but also there is some, sometimes you see digital mark making, say like here perhaps, or here. So maybe digital edits with physical. Maybe that's one what's going on here. The riddle continues really, because it seems quite clear that there are, you know, physical collage going on. Maybe that gets scanned in and then it gets edited digitally. That's what I would guess. Cool little fragment of a guitar there. Uh, very cool work. Addition of one for 12 Tezos. Uh, pretty cool for 12 Tezos. Here's another one, addition of one for 12 Tezos, Eric's Device. And this is Horseback Riders, Equestrians. And again, similar style here. Pretty interesting compositions here. And just interesting pieces. A lot going on. Uh, so very cool there. As we continue here, Santiago, Secret Life of Shivering Biotech Creature. This is an addition of one at... Auction for 50 Tezos, more awesome, kind of, oh, I'm not going to zoom in there. I'm not going to tempt the computer gods here uh, with uh, zooming in here because these files are massive. I think this one's maybe 20,000 pixels, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, another cool abstract. I love this kind of going off of the perpendicular pixelation, this kind of diagonal pixelation. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Blender, Gimp, and Inkscape. So no AI in this one. That one's only 6,000, so we probably would have been okay. Amazonia number three. I don't know if we looked at this one. This is by Braun. Uh, so another cool abstract here. This is, uh, you know, using kind of a more pixel art uh, ab abstract work inspired by Amazonia forest colors and topography. Topography. Here's Amazonia trip.mp4. And this is a triptych that was also released. So we saw one the other day. And here's a new triptych. Let's see if it loads. Yeah, so interesting movement, isn't it? Maybe that's my slow computer here. Very interesting. It's moving at a dif different rhythm, isn't it? So very cool and interesting to see uh, the... I think the first time... The space between in between the works was maybe double this, so it seems to be getting more refined 
a uh, really cool triptych here. This is an addition of one. That went for 55 Tezos. Nice sale to OMG, I drawed it. Very nice sale uh, to Braun for Braun. Here's another one by Shepperton. See all these wonderful abstracts that are happening here. Uh, this is on Zora. This is called Crash Test.Raw. 22 minted so far, 19 days to go. And you can see this would hang really nicely with Yuri J, who did the kitchen that we saw before, also putting out some abstracts here. Uh, so here is one. This is an addition of one for 50 Tezos. And here's just a close up here. So interesting there. Here's another one. Uh, and this is an addition of five. So playing around with the sales mechanics. And these are eight Tezos each. Excuse me. And here's one more uh, addition of five. And this is eight Tezos each as well. So just interesting abstracts. One going to Ahek here. Interesting abstracts by Yuri J. And then here's Rustic Digital Art with a new work with, I believe, Object, uh, Object Paint 98. As you can see here, Morning Drive Ruta number 11. So pretty interesting because you can tell it's a rustic digital art quite clearly. It's interesting to see how styles translate in new softwares, right? And quite a large work, I might add. So just an interesting piece here, interesting experimental piece here by, look at these interesting uh, marks that are happening here. A lot of interesting experimentation. Still need to use that tool. Addition of 10 for four Tezos each. They're selling well. These Object 98 works. Parabolic Oracle. This is Zesis Bliatkes. Kind of playing with the Windows uh, XP or Windows uh, op Windows 7. I think XP operating system here. And pretty interesting piece. Uh, as we see here from the mark making. Kind of looks like sampled brushes here. And kind of this book in the middle. With this cryptic you know, drawings on it. And the whole thing is kind of cryptic, isn't it? And this almost looking like an organic kind of wooden plant-like, you know, thing you might find in the jungle with eggs in it. So just a wild piece with some wild mark making here. Very interesting piece. This is edition of 20 for 15 Tezos. Two gone. Yuri J picking one up. You, see, you still see how small this scene is. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the bull market in the, like what happens if things stay high and then keep going higher? At what point... Does all of a sudden the attention get kind of pushed back to the artists again? Or we're, we're, because I still don't have friends who are banging down my door like they were in 2021. And I wonder if the same experience you're having as well. I'm not getting that yet. So, you know, you wonder if that's still going to happen here. Here's Fleep. Great to hear from Fleep here. Tempo 01. And a work. So this is on uh, Solana on exchange.art. Let's see if it loads here. There we go. So a really cool illustration here, kind of semi-abstract, I want to say, but of these sailboats and this cool kind of almost looking like uh, these kind of island-like structures and then something underwater here. Kind of looks like water a little bit and there's shadow on this kind of blue water. Let's see if we have any details here. The stillness of the island at twilight allows me to reflect on my emotions and find inner peace. So Tempo 01, this is at a price of 1.1 sol. And actually, this was minted a couple of months ago. So I just saw this, and here's another one. Uh, so I hadn't seen these before. This is also listed by Fleep. I came across this on X. We'll see if this loads up. And so just give it another second here. And we might have to go to the next one here. We'll go to the next one, and we'll come back to this, and we'll see if it loads up. Uh, Joseph Pratt Sorella, uh, interesting piece on X. Just kind of a wild illustration here, isn't it? Uh, so 114,000 views. Uh, so doing quite well there uh, in that experimental, here we go, in that experimental work. So this is also fleet. So playing again with these kind of islands and this time with windmills, interestingly, these modern uh, wind turbines, as you'd call them. Uh, so 1.1 sol by now. So interesting. Interesting work from Fleet. Here's Ezra Eslin. Did you film my dream, Mom? So a cool work from Ezra Esland, already 68 minted with 24 days to go on Zora. So trying out Zora here, and here we see more kind of violent satire. I saw Dune on the weekend. It was kind of a violent Dune too. But man, was it good. 
That was uh, one of the best movies I feel like I've ever seen. Like, I, I'm not a big movie person, uh, but my heart, like I had to, I realized my heart was going crazy for about five minutes. And all of a sudden I said, I need to just like concentrate on breathing right now and make sure my heart doesn't get out of control. What a movie. What a movie. And now I want to see the first one. Anyway, let's look at Ezra Eslin's merry-go-round of death here with all these murders here with phones voyeuristically taking pictures of this merry-go-round. Uh, brutal satire, seemingly, uh, by Ezra Eslin on Zora. So that's still available to Mint. Here's Jake Studios uh, with a couple of works here. Uh, you what? So edition of one, and this went for only 11 Tezos for a one of one Jake Studios. And again, this kind of barbed wire crown of thorns. You win, kind of a video game uh, thing going on here. The teeth changing with the mouth opening and closing and interesting little tattoos on the face and maybe kind of an angel and a demon figure on each shoulder here. Very interesting piece here. Always kind of resisting uh, rationality. OMW to NFT, going off to NFT Uruguay, uh, Jake Studios. So this is an edition of one. This is listed for 77 Tezos. And they're on the skateboard with eyes, right? Always kind of, you know, again, surreal. And there's a really cool tattoo, Windows tattoo. Uh, so very cool with a com big computer monitor on carrying to NFT Uruguay, this big retro computer monitor. Hilarious. And you got to love those clouds. And the colors are awesome on this piece too. Very cool work from Jake Studios. Here's Katarina Create, Blooming Creation number five. How are we doing for time here? We're doing well. Uh, and so a few works here, a couple of portraits, I think, or a couple of kind of headshots, busts, we might say. Blooming Creation number five, a head with flowers and a little bit of GIF animation here. And this went for 15 Tezos, a one of one. Here's Blooming Creation number six. I don't think this is animated. This is an edition of one. And this is listed for 20. And you have kind of a plant green kind of color here. Again, the plants mixing with the face. Four leaf clover there and everything. So cool work there from Katarina Create. And here is Seba Sestaro, Some Memories. So continuing, this was posted on X. I don't think there's any volume. So continuing this interesting portrayal of how we experience memory uh, visually. Uh, really cool interpretation, isn't it? And I even like putting it at the back of the head. It seems like a genuine attempt at trying to visually capture what is happening with memory using just, again, visual elements. Uh, very interesting. Uh, very original. Uh, just really cool work uh, from Seba Sestaro. Here's, I think, Padu, who I don't know if I knew Padu's work before. Very interesting. Actually, I think we've seen maybe a couple of works by Padu before. Very interesting. Kind of like a sign. But again, more surreal illustration, right? Uh, we have another one here. This is also posted on X. Uh, again, more just kind of interesting, kind of geometric, but the green of the background bleeds into the green of the geometry here. Uh, very interesting piece. And I think we have another work by Padu coming up, uh, more in the pixel art section. As long as my computer, I'm gonna speed up a bit here so my computer doesn't crash. Uh, like last time, because otherwise that would be heartbreaking. Guillaume Cornet. Don't want to get overconfident on the computer here. It seems to be doing well. Let's stick with it. Guillaume Cornet with another work here. This is a physical work. Okay. Uh, again, playing with the favela theme. And I think uh, Tornado Rodriguez was saying, I think uh, Guillaume Cornet was quoting a bunch of artists, including Tornado in this work, if I'm not mistaken. Edition of 100 for 450. Uh, so that is really cool. Uh, Denise, Denise Quirkmaz, Insult. Just an interesting piece here. And uh, never seen Denise's work before, kind of the sketchbook style, edition of 15 for three Tezos each, one of one picking one up. And continuing on, just a cool drawing here on X. This is Besu, kind of has an ancient feeling, kind of cave painting style a little bit here. Uh, cool work there. And here is Daniel W., Corporate Bestiary number three, The Salary Man. And so I think part of a larger series, an interesting uh, portrayal of almost the darkness falling on the salary man here in his office. Edition of 18 for four Tezos each. Nice piece. Uyo 66, Alley. Uh, so another interesting work here by Uyo 66, again using this kind of red and blue 3D. 
Uh, it looks like it's made for 3D glasses, kind of looks like a space person. And continuing on, Tornado Rodriguez, another Object 98 work or Windows 98 intimacy while creating. I thought this is a great work because it, it kind of shows the uh, different textures of painting. It plays with different textures using the same software. And I thought that was great. Maybe a self-portrait of sorts. Tornado being the one-eyed figure here, the artist, potentially. Very nice floor there, too. Uh, just another beautiful work. Kind of like this busy textures here, contrasting with a very nice light one-pixel brush. And even really nice rendition here of the person, the artist. Edition of eight, sold out at 3.33. And here's RJ with a couple of works. Uh, art equals meme. Art is a form of meme. So this one is a play on Norman Rockwell, and then we have a green one. Memes are a form of art. So kind of inverting the message and changing the colors there, interestingly. And a really nice uh, pastiche of Roy Lichtenstein as well here. Rocket displays through the internet. So of course that super famous Roy Lichtenstein work, uh, really nicely done there by RJ. And this is, I think, Sui Soichi. Work in progress from Black Flowers. Uh, just really interesting pixel art here. I don't think there's AI, but it's almost tempting to see that textual, that stable diffusion uh, textual inverters, if I'm not mistaken on the name there. Naimi Pacnia. This is for International Women's Day. I thought this was bril brilliant uh, pixel art here. And again, kind of looking like weaving. Uh, very cool work here. It can be very def uh, delicate with this microphone, so things don't uh, die here. I'm going to keep going fast here. Uh, Cap'n with a super cool work. Cap'n does it again. <laughs> you know, Cap'n, just a natural. It's interesting how Cap'n comes out of music because this this person, Cap'n, so good, as Sui Soichi said there. Brother Mord, number 11, also by Cap'n, also known as Figments here, using special kind of software. Just awesome. Uh, this sold out at 10 Tezos each, so nice take. Uh, for Cap in there. And here's Padu again. So we saw Padu before. Uh, and so here, I think with the drawings, now we got some pixel art here. So cool, showing some range here. Uh, blue and white, uh, cool work. And here's Anis Abdin. Uh, this is day 70 of drawing pixel art animations every day in 2024, eight colors. So amazingly here with this beautiful stream going through uh, the countryside here. Uh, and here is, I believe, Wasteman Gold Minovich, a one of one which only went for one Tezos, this pixel art work here called The Loser. As you see here, one, kilo, one kilobyte of RAM. And so kind of a funny piece here by Wasteman Gold Minovich, one of the first home microcomputers and over a million of them were sold. Here is Low Trippy, empty shopping cart. So cool works here. This is on Solana showing this kind of infinite shopping cart uh, train of shopping carts here uh, following each other within a beautiful uh, uh, grocery store or convenience store. Uh, so very cool work here. How empty is your shopping cart? 216 by 270 scaled up. And this is an addition of 10 on exchange.art for 0.1 Solana each. Very cool piece. Here's Muji, obelisk number eight. So a new obelisk from Muji, kind of interesting, always changing up the uh, abstractions here. Uh, which is cool and almost has a sci-fi feeling uh, to the obelisk here again with and then planets in the background cool work there edition of one selling for 113 tezos to jail warden nice sale ed marola that's almost 200 bucks these days tree of here and now so and we have an epic ed marola coming up here but here we'll do this one first uh just super interesting work uh, by Ed Marola with the, you see all the details in the frame here, the epic frame. The frame almost steals the show, but then you see the skull and just everything. Beautifully detailed work. Tree of Here and Now. Six Tezos, uh, edition of 11. And I picked up one of these, edition of 11. Uh, it's probably like one left. Uh, this epic work here. would do wonderfully in your local museum, if you ask me. So just a very, very cool and fun work with that great floor. 
And there's a name for it, Claire de Moog by Suzanne Violetta. Uh, three minutes and 37 seconds. Uh, just a very cool work. I think there's one left there on primary. There is at 15 Tezos. So nice work. Almost selling out at 15 Tezos for an addition of 11. Nice work there. Here's Lubital Blizny who makes these wild uh, gifts here. We'll see what's going on this time. And so we see the Savior bringing up a TV to a van that is driving to heaven. And praying, so the prayers are answered. The prayers are answered here. And bringing the object on the TV and flying up. Okay, there we are. Okay, I'm going to keep speeding here uh, in case this thing, uh, computer does crash. Uh, so really cool work there, as usual, from Lubadel, Francois Gamma, uh, Deserto Mechanico. Really kind of a different work from Francois Gamma. Hey, I thought pretty rad, though. Uh, three Tezos, edition of 30. Uh, very cool piece. And Stippin' Pixel. Stippin' Pixel is back. I think took a little break, if I'm not mistaken, with some really cool kind of, you know, missing kind of layers and whatnot. Uh, just very cool. Uh, GM and Fly, maybe still working on it. Uh, very interesting works here from Stippin' Pixel. I think this is on Zora. So back on Zora, made with a sprite, interestingly. Uh, this is an edition of four that you can mint for 0.02. ETH, very interestingly. And here's one more posted by Stippin Pixel. So very cool work here. Uh, great to see Stippin Pixel. And here's another experimental uh, pixel artist, Element Lee, ice breaking on the Blue River. Very interesting. Almost looks like a building, but it's just ice breaking. And there, so uh, really cool work from Element Lee, who of course we saw the cardboard earlier that Element Lee was engraving on, laser engraving on. Blue 281, I'm building a tower. So interesting piece here from Bleu 281, kind of a big kind of sci-fi structure. Here is Kristen Roos, 2024 Shapes in Ultra Paint, and none listed so far, showing the, a screenshot of the entire uh, canvas here with the work on it. Interesting move. Edition of 10, again, not listed. And here's Svezer, The Magic Tunnel. So another really interesting piece here from Svezer. Uh, kind of experimental pixel art, and that is three Tezos edition of ten. George Costanza of NFTs picking one up. Chaz uh, Starfish Odyssey this is an edition of fifteen, and these are going for two seventy each. And their cigarettes, old computer game, looks like a Mac, and uh, all sorts of stuff going on in the bedroom there, in the background on the shelves, and pictures on the wall. And here, back on Zorro, Cancino with Miami Goat. So, uh, of course, uh, the name of the most famous soccer player in the world is escaping me right now, but I think he's on uh, Miami, uh, or playing in Miami right now. So here, gets a goal, and I guess Cancino is celebrating. Just a really cool uh, work here. And here, of course, is the other famous soccer, soccer player whose name I don't remember. Uh, how do I not remember these, these names? Uh, if I'm going to blank on anything, we'll blank it. Uh, co I can't remember. Anyways, cool. A couple of cool soccer works there. Uh, Merciful Brevity. This is Lorna Mills on Object. Uh, so edition of 15. Very cool. And here is Psycho Futurist. 15 minutes ago, you, were that hu you knew that humans were alone on this planet. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to speed up here. But this is 14 Tezos edition of 10 and maybe 14 Tezos on secondary. So very cool work here. Once again, looking almost like different UFOs with this weird kind of script alphabet here. Uh, super rad uh, from Psycho Futurist, as usual. Great discovery recently. Oxi, this is kind of interesting here. You see this uh, plane crashed. I thought the pixelation here was pretty awesome. And then you kind of have this weird cycling loop. So interesting work by Oxi. Renato Marini, a very minimal work, framed blocks, pixel art, uh, so interesting kind of cycling colors, very kind of minimal work, but pretty interesting. Only five cents, five Tezo cents, edition of a thousand. Here's Silva Santuz in an open edition, four editions minted, 27 days to go. Very large uh, kind of glitch ROM pixels here. Really nice kind of abstract, I would say, volleyball. Uh, Pale Blue Dot, this is by uh, Not Exactly Sure. Uh, over Melted, maybe? And Pale Blue Dot, of course, I think that's how Carl Sagan referred to the Earth. Also, Brian Geisen, who came up with it first? 
Good question. Pale Blue Dot, uh, World Games NES, so another glitch from Open Edition, only 44 Tezo cents. 1987 Accident. It's kind of a funky work here of Skeleton. I think this was in the community, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> So, interesting piece there. Cancer for the Cure, interesting title. One Tezos each, edition of five. And then a few by Walk here as we cruise for our own survival here. So, a few more. Critical Plus, uh, hilarious at auction for two Tezos. Here's another one, Bubakush. And maybe this one's already sold. And here is one more, Candy Creamy. And this one looks already sold for two Tezos. People getting one of one walks for really a song here. So cool work there. And then look at how great this is. A more gorgeous colors from Rannick Steer, GM. So this is from the Endless show, I think. So again, uh, pink, orange, and kind of purple. Uh, beautiful combination. And the black, a uh, really nice piece there from Rannick Steer. And here's MCHX with a cool work. This is from Highlight.xyz. I assume AI work. Uh, beautiful. Uh, really great gradients we're getting here in the it's kind of minimal artworks here color field strano sometimes i dream in colors then i wake up just an interesting uh, animated abstract here and here acid boy officially back to work acid boy is back so that is cool and there we are seeing uh what acid boy is up to more trippiness really uh so we'll see you know putting out a lot of work on ordinals there it'll be interesting to see what happens next uh this is, I always have trouble on Taya figuring out who the artist is. Maybe Morgan HBY Flowers. Uh, interesting piece here. Kind of a, again, kind of abstract work. This is half a Tezos edition of 145 gone. And I'm going to keep running here. Nicholas Sassoon, Sunset. So I think we saw a different one the other day. So here is a new one, this time a Sunset, rather than I think the other was like a Valley. So cool work from Nicholas Sassoon. Here's Klaus. This is 23 Tezos. This is composition. Nice rough one. Uh, number 161. Here's number 159. Great colors here. This one sold. Uh, really cool animations here too. Analog video glitch. And that sold for 22 Tezos. And here's another one with fantastic color. Number 157. I don't know if we looked at this one. This one's 22 Tezos. But again, just spectacular color in these works here. Uh, that's also an addition of one. Here's Somfe, Firefly, early version. So cool uh, work going on here. Just waiting for the glitch. Here we come. Here we go. So as you can see here, pretty cool. So that looks like a work in progress uh, from Somfe. And here's another one, Rogue Star, with this, uh, you know, doing gymnastics or something. Uh, so cool work here. Again, from Somfe. And then here is Kota Nakazono edition filament number 13 and 13 Tezos each. Very cool piece here. Wild one. Edition of five. And that looks uh, sold out on primary. And here's Renki. Uh, the work called Kuki. So again, playing with red and blue and just a simple geom geometry, geometric object, and then light. Right? And shadow. So uh, no, here's another one, edition of one. And again, I'm going to speed through this for my own survival. Here's Salawaki, Crypto's New Scent. So plain, Binance released a new perfume, uh, kind of insanely. Uh, so Salawaki making fun of it. You've got one new email. And it's an email from Binance. And uh, so they want to team up. I wonder if that's real. It's kind of scary if it is. I teamed up with a famous fragrance expert the next day, so maybe half fictional. Today I'm at the mall for the big reveal. <laughs> so good satire here from Salawaki. I mean, this is pretty awesome. And then... So, uh, yeah, so playing off of the whole uh, Crypto's new scent, edition of 20, this is 35 Tezos now on secondary. Lucas Lejeune. Uh, here, uh, Mo, Mo SHIT, who I do follow, uh, this is some really interesting works here coming out. Not sure if they're AI, pixel art, or whatever they are, they almost look like, uh, 
maybe a sprite with the tool with the tile set uh really interesting i call it the computer graphics perspective where you kind of have uh full on like looking straight on at this tree but you're looking from above kind of simultaneously like uh bird's eye and 45 degree angle so far 10 tezos edition of one and here's another one just very interesting work there from mo and santiago with some ai abstracts here as we zoom through kind of interesting looking pieces uh very interesting looking works here here's another one uh so cool ai abstracts here from santiago and continuing on mikey wilson self-portrait Self-made portrait in Midjourney. Uh, so another beautiful AI painting here of Mikey Wilson. Then images added added later in Procreate. Very cool. So five Tezos edition of twenty. Die with the most likes on the scene. Gloom tube. Bazaya. Really Oxine. Howdy do. Isolationist. Uh, kind of all star crowd there. Collecting. Here's Lily Illo, with more architects and chairs. Another beautiful AI painting uh, from Lily Illo. We got a couple of more. And more elderly figures here. And again, those great AI distortions here, aged care. And here is another one. Again, he almost has a modernist feel to the painting style. And then this really elongated arm. And here's Tooks with an interesting AI kind of abstract experience. Sooner or, or later, uh, as we continue to fly here. Uh, so interesting work from Tooks. Again, as we look at different AI, here's Zoom, room number 44, if I'm not mistaken there, beautifully textured room here, and not too much color just here and there, uh, which I think kind of really gives it a good mood. This one was burned, uh, so there may be a new one there. Here's Mr. Shapeless, uh, so good to see them, and of course I follow Mr. Shapeless, that's an X glitch, and so trying different things out, similar but different to the earlier work we saw about a year ago. Here's Strange Thing, putting out a few spectacular works here. Uh, the bull, uh, referring to the bull market here, uh, really cool work here. Waiting for the NFT bull run is like chasing a myth. However, the true reward is found in the journey, not just the destination. Yeah, so is it coming? And look at this brilliant work of art here by Strange Things. Stussy, New York, uh, Los Angeles, Tokyo, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm trying to remember what the original was that uh, Strange Thing is riffing off of here. Love the double head though. Uh, very cool work there. Here's another strange thing. Uh, again, combining modern uh, clothing and iconography and renaissance. Uh, just very cool work there. Here's Little Cakes, The Lights Nine, using Mprop Studio. This is an edition of one. So again, with these kind of illuminated figures here, that went for 25 Tezos, nice sale. And here is No Hygiene, more experimental AI art. And this is called Wait, with this kind of wild angel figure here. Uh, very cool work, uh, 2000 by 2000, uh, made with Midjourney. And here, as we go into the physicals, Bosque Grazias, us talking with stars that night. And so another cyanotype uh, print. Uh, so very cool, playing with the st doing the stars. I wonder if that's a photo of the stars. Here's H. Row as we go into the physicals. Very beautiful work here. Uh, not exactly sure what's going on, but it's beautiful. And the wolf made of stars here. I love this. Uh, yeah. As that person says, good day to be alive. This is Joachim Official, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Another really cool uh, art that doesn't take itself too seriously. There's something to be said for it. Maybe like, and maybe that's even better. Maybe art with a sense of humor. You know, uh, again, I call it the new humor. Uh, here's Zwokso with a really cool, you know, uh, minimal work. Kind of has a modernist feel to it as well. A carefully and beautifully done. Moment of hesitation. Uh, two, two clocks here. I think this was, was this? No, this is Bemiso. Uh, so just another interesting, you see in the airbrush again. I'm going to keep running here so we can preserve this episode. Uh, this is It's Not Gallery. Love this. Kind of doing a Mortal Kombat uh, figure. So again, using video games as uh, source imagery. Brilliant. Uh, let's continue here. Boba, Boba Seek Matilla uh, with a couple of more kind of Transformer works here. A uh, really cool work. Uh, brand new. And there's Norio Monma. Interesting, interesting. 
with a little rabbit on top there. Super interesting art coming out. We've been looking at this uh, textile artist here, Logi, it's official cactus. Uh, this is from 2023. And here is Bondozo Bandito, content creator. Uh, I love the whimsicality of this artist. Darwin would be proud. Interesting comment. David Hale still needs a title. Great artist I've been following for years. Really awesome illustrator on Instagram there. And here is Zozo. Kind of a similar piece to the Nov 1914. They could put a show together, couldn't they? Think in color. Uh, so, And you see those Zozo circles there. Totally awesome. And here we have El Eloy. Uh, and here we have a really another really cool, I think, physical artwork here. And let's... And here it is, almost looks like someone dreaming, but not super clear, kind of minimal color. Uh, lava Pang, Lava Pang. Imagine your pain sipping lava drops of volcano champagne. Uh, so this is three sol, and auction ends in four hours. And here, this awesome artist, Moto583, Moto Hero. Turtles, dogs, just a wild artist. And I brought up this one too. I had to. I simply had to. Turtle Burger. Really fun artist, uh, just great. And here's It's Not Gallery posting another one. Emma Stern, It's Not Gallery on the cutting edge here. So another beautiful uh, artwork here. Uh, it, it's interesting. I mean, it almost looks like ceramic. And that, my friends, is your show. Thank you for joining me. And we'll see you at the Spaces on Wednesday. We'll have a show then too. Thanks again. Until next time, take care.